It is Sunday, July 3rd in the MLB, and this is Austin from Calling Our Shot. And I'm Logan from Calling Our Shot. And we are back with our three best picks of the day. We got our favorite run line, got a favorite player prop, favorite no run first inning coming your guys' way. As always, guys, just do us a real quick favor. And if you are new, first of all, welcome. Go hit that subscribe button. It really helps Austin and I grow this channel. We're closing in on 35,000. One of these days we're going to hit it. We're, we're inching closer to our goal. Also, drop a like on this video, especially if we made you some money. I agree, Logan. Let's recap yesterday. We did not get to bring out the brooms. It was a one and two day. The Twins, they saved all the runs for the end of the game, ended up winning by one. The Rays and uh, Blue Jays nerfy. Um, Shane McClanahan gives up one run and then says, that's all I'm giving you up and goes absolutely scorched earth mode, whatever. And But you know what? That wasn't great, but you know what made up for it? The parlay of the day from Underdog Fantasy absolutely smacks. I saw some people tailing us on Twitter. I put it in the pinned comment. Look, we had Kirby's over and outs, McClanahan over and outs, Devers over in bases, and Crone over in bases. Obviously, Devers was our only player prop of the day. But, man, oh, man, it felt good to bring this all into green. Hopefully, you guys tailed. And you know what, Logan? I felt like being nice today for the people because today we have another parlay. And if this one hits... We're giving away 100 bucks to a random subscriber and 100 bucks to a random COS All-Star. Look, if you want to sign up for Underdog, use code COS. You get 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks, or use the link in the description. You know what? I'll pull up the code, the parlay here, and then I'll talk about it at the end of the video. You can see it. Riley Green, Giancarlo Stan, Kyle Schwarber, Mike Trout. You see them all on the screen. I'll talk about all the likes at the end of the video. We appreciate you guys, as always, for supporting the channel. We really can't do it without you guys. So thank you guys all for supporting us. If you want to go use that code for Underdog, we certainly would appreciate it. Um, but, Logan, I don't really have any more uh, notes for the people i do have to mention a couple new cos all-stars we appreciate you guys maybe we've been helping you make some money with that underdog parlay go become an all-star hit that join button a couple new ones trone hunter crystal craig christopher castro and gotta hit the bag is returning we appreciate you guys always for supporting the channel but logan no more dilly dallying let's get into some winners what do you got for the people today it's, it's a tough act to follow when you gave the people a plus 900 winner, but I'm going to try to give them a plus value winner and i'm going to the mets versus rangers game and i'm taking the mets First five run line, so minus a half versus the Rangers. Currently plus 105 odds on BetMGM's the best value as Austin's pulling up here, right? We've got a couple of the books, uh, you know, with with plus value. You know, Fandle, minus 102, eh, whatever. Whatever, Fandle. Yesterday, I backed Sonny Gray, and it turned out poorly for me. Today, I'm fading a Gray. Fading John Gray, right? John Gray, 4.05 road ERA and a 1.2 whip on the road. That whip's a little bit high, right? He should, certainly could walk some... Some Mets batters and get them on base, right? The Mets coming off a seven to three loss yesterday. They will, they will bounce back yesterday, or they will bounce back today. Trevor Williams kind of sold them in the first five yesterday. Glad we didn't have that bet. But but today I, I am going to trust the Mets bats to be able to get up some hits and runs on Gray. Mets seventh in batting average at home, tenth in batting average and balls in play on home. The Mets get very timely hitting. It's it's just what they do. That's what they've done all season long. I trust that they'll be able to you know practice enough plate discipline. To get a couple runners in scoring position against you know John Gray to be able to knock in those hitters right now the the I pulled the splits versus Gray as I always do Escobar five for twenty three Starling Marte four four for sixteen batting two fifty not a ton of appearances for the rest of the lineup so obviously I'd like to see Escobar uh, get a little bit better versus Gray today but you know what I trust I trust you know those those Mets batters. They all got, have really cool nicknames, right? Jeff McNeil, the Flying Squirrel, batting 298 at home. Polar, Polar Bear Pete Alonso, batting 271 at home. Starling Marte, 323 at home. So if, if you've got several hitters in the lineup batting around 300 ish, you know, at home, I, I can definitely trust that Mets offense. It's it's worth you know the plus value odds that we're getting on it. Now for the Mets today, we've got Carlos Carrasco. Carlos Carrasco, six five and three earned runs in each of his last three starts. Coming in with a 3.88 home ERA. So the home ERA is, is significantly better. But, you know, I know we're going to get a lot of people, you know, back, you know, push back. You know, the six and the five earned run type games, Logan. I mean, Carlos Carrasco has just been absolutely selling. Yes, I know. His his whip is, is kind of what's doing him in, right? A 1.32 whip at home. He needs to cut down on the walks, right? If he's if he's just getting giving up hits and walks, he's going to be pitching a lot of, you know, high-stress innings. Batters are also hitting the third highest average and balls and batting average and balls and play versus Carrasco. But you know what? That's a very fluky stat. I, you know, I, I like it because it helps me feel better about certain things. But you know what? It is a little bit fluky stat. That average will eventually go down as Carlos Carrasco settles in a little bit. And being at home in this spot, I think he will settle down. Honestly, the, the main reason why I really do like, you know, this bet and why I can trust Carlos Carrasco, the Texas hitters are bad versus him, right? Cole Calhoun, two for 14. Mitch Garver, one for 14. And Semyon, one for 14 all versus Carlos Carrasco career-wise. So, you know, they have not hit him well at all. 
I hope Carlos Carrasco can, you know, just settle in, not be not be erratic today. Texas 18th in OPS on you know on the road. So their offense is pretty hit or miss. Yesterday they were hit. So hopefully today they're miss. You know what? Today I'm baking some cookies today if if this bet's hit. So, Logan, what the heck does cookies have anything to do with it? Well, it, you know, sticking with the great nicknames, Carlos Carrasco, his nickname is Cookie. So you know what? He's we're gonna go out and go to first five dub and eat some cookies to celebrate. But Austin, what do you got for your player prop today? Yeah, yesterday we were very good with Rafael Devers hitting that over in the first inning, and then he said, I'm out of here, and he pieced out for the rest of the game. Look, we don't complain. Hopefully this guy will do the same thing because we're going with a guy by the name of Alec Thomas on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Second is over, one and a half bases, minus 125 on FanDuel. Now we do see, you know, books – Kind of all over the place on this one. We see sharper books at minus 149. Some books at minus 155, minus 150. So if you can get this on FanDuel, that'd be ab- absolutely ideal. Not sure if I'd go up to minus 155 or not for uh, Mr. Thomas today. Now let's talk about why we like him. Now, Thomas, you'll see him kind of bounce around the starting lineup. If you guys are avid Arizona Diamondbacks fans, I'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there. You'll see he kind of bounces around, and there's a couple reasons why. Now, he should bat number two in the lineup today. He bats normally second in the lineup versus right-handed pitchers. He is a lefty for what it's worth. And then normally bats like six, seven, or eight versus uh, left-handed pitcher so we saw yesterday he was batting in the seven or eight slot today he should be back in that number two slot as they're facing chad cool who should be and we look at it they're off easy on the road in coors field got a high over under should see close to five plus plate appearances today that'd be lo- that'd be lovely if he can get up in that number two slot which i believe he will be now we look thomas two plus bases in four of six games so far this year with five plus plate appearances look i think he should be able to see that today his two misses that he didn't hit the two plus bases he'd have three combined walks now we can't control walks but hopefully he doesn't walk today now cool he's allowing you, know, you look at thomas he's hitting 272 on the road and 266 versus right-handed pitchers and he's actually hitting only 233 at home and 222 versus left-handed pitchers that's to say thomas not cool but we look at 14 of his 15 extra base hits this year have all come versus right-handed pitchers there's a reason that the arizona diamondbacks put him in the seven and eight slot when they're versus a you know a lefty it's because he struggles against left-handed pitchers but really been seeing righties pretty well and you know cool when he's facing the left-handed batter he's letting them hit 245 versus him now that doesn't seem too well but you look at the power uh, that cool is allowing he's allowed 28 extra base, base hits versus them this year or this year 19 of them have been to left-handed bases so our left-handed batter so we should see good lefties like a guy named alec thomas should hit him pretty well today and if you look at cool's pitches Throw 40.3% will be a sinker, 37.5% slider. Look, that's perfect for Alec Thomas because those are his two best pitches to hit. 412 versus the sinker, 452 versus the slider. Look, the odds are juiced for a reason. This is a guy in Thomas that's two for 17 in his last 17 at bats over the last week. This guy's not swinging a hot bat. It's actually an ice cold bat. Yet they're juicing him up to minus 150 on some books, even sharper books. The over under 11 and a half. I think Alec Thomas comes out here, hits pretty well. Jacob is over one and a half bases at minus 125 on FanDuel. That's our player prop of the day. Go get us a first inning winner, Mr. Thomas. But Logan, you know what time it is. Grab those flags, Nerfy Nation people that are COS All-Stars. Let's wave them. Wave them like crazy because we're cashing one today. We didn't hit yesterday. We're due a winner today. There's a lot of different options. Maybe Logan will throw out a couple of them for you guys after we give you our official pick. Today, Pirates and Brewers. We're going the nowhere in first inning in this one, minus 120 on DraftKings. So you can see almost every single book around the same odds, which is what we love to see. Now, why do we like this one Say, Well, on the mound, well, at first I have to say no more juice now. I don't know if something happened in my video, but we're going to keep rolling with it. But we look at Jose Quintana on the mound for the Pirates, 12-3 and three on their one first innings. He did Yerfi versus Milwaukee, but that was in Milwaukee. They, we know they always love to hit solo bombs to ruin those. You look at Milwaukee, just 24th in batting average versus lefties. Milwaukee only 14th in first inning runs. We've been fading Milwaukee pretty good this year. I think Quintana can get us those first three outs. What about the next guy, Logan? Yeah, Brandon Woodruff, right? We we took a nerfy of his, you know, his last start and in, in, in a cast for us. So let's go back to the well, right? Woodruff, nine and one on no run first innings. We love to see that really good evidence. He did nerfy twice versus Pittsburgh this season. So he's seen the lineup, the top half of the lineup, and he's got us those three outs we needed. Pittsburgh, 27th and first inning runs. This is a back of the pack team. It's a back of the pack offense. The over under set to seven and a half for a reason, right? If it's not the Brewers doing a lot of the scoring, it's probably not going to come. So that's why the over under set, you know, low. I think Quintana and, and Woodruff combined can get us to no run first inning. Look, though, if if this doesn't hit, here's an ultimatum, and I've told Austin before, I hate picking Pirates nerfies. This is the last chance I give them. Because if they if they if they Yerfy against Woodruff, I 
<laughs> they live to they live to make my life miserable. But today we're yeah. we're flying the flags. I do want to talk as Austin kind of mentioned. I have my phone here. I'm I'm kind of looking through the slate about other ones. We said he you know he kind of mentioned no more juice nerfies, right? If I see them in the minus 140ish range, that's danger zone, right? The McClanahan danger zone yesterday. He pitched so well, but he just gave up that first inning run, so that was tough. But I mean, if you want to take a stab at, at good nerfies with bad odds, I mean, the, the Mariners won the Mariners game set over under set to six and a half could be a solid look if you're maybe trying to parlay piece it with, with something else. I think the, the Royals Tigers one, it's also juice, but it also I mean, it's juice for a reason, right? The Singer and Scooble are, are two decent first inning pitchers. And I mean, those are two back to the pack offenses. So, I mean, those are a couple if you look at them. I mean, I, honestly, your nation had a day yesterday. I, I don't oh, remember man. what their record is, but they smoked the Nerfy nation today. We're coming back for some coin. We're coming back with a vengeance, Nerfy Nation. Yeah, Nerfy Nation is absolutely just swimming in a bucket of coins. I mean, they—I they, think it was eleven and four, twelve and I, it was ridiculous. They went crazy yesterday. So if you hit some Nerfies yesterday, props to you because you only had a, you found a, a needle in a haystack. But look, this is our only one. Pirates, Brewers, Woodruff. You can't spell Woodruff. Wow, big W. So we're getting a Nerfy and we're waving these flags. As a reminder, let me talk about this parlay of the day uh, that we're doing for uh, on Underdog Fantasy. Like a reminder, if you want to sign up for Underdog, make sure you use code COS or the link in the description. And if this parlay hits we're giving away 100 bucks to random subscriber random cos all-star now riley green i'll talk about him second he just got a walk off first ever home run and now he has to come around bounce back 1205 p.m start time i don't know what he was up to last night just not thinking he's gonna have a pretty good day today and we look at john carlos stan like stan hit a homer yesterday i don't see it. he never hits homers in back to back games i'll just fade him against tristan mckenzie who does like to throw some meatballs down the middle hopefully stan is just hitting some fly balls kyle schwerber it's not june june anymore sorry man Terrible splits versus Wainwright. And then you look at Mike Trout under in bases. Um, well, Trout does not have good splits against Framber Valdez. So I'm going to take a little stab at this. Yesterday was all. We hit all overs for the underdog parlay. So it's only right that I go all unders today. So if you want to tell me, definitely appreciate it. I like all those guys probably under in bases if that's your only uh, play on your books. But we appreciate you guys always for tuning in. Have a great July 3rd. We'll be back again tomorrow morning, July 4th. Hopefully firing some fireworks, banging some big parlays. We appreciate you guys as always. Awesome, Logan. We'll catch you in the next one.